Some consider it the Kentucky Invitational. And Big Blue Nation thinks of this tournament as its birthright. Another championship in the SEC. SEC Tournament Champions. Their 31st tournament title. They won the first, and they've won the last. John Calipari has assembled another class of talent that has its sights set on cutting down the nets, not just in Nashville, but also Minneapolis. It's step one of the postseason for the Cats. It's prime time in Nashville, Tennessee. This is the SEC Tournament on the SEC Network, all part of Champ Week. And tonight, the second seed of Kentucky Wildcats meet up with the desperate Alabama Crimson Tide, both trying to refine their postseason hopes. Alabama with a major come from behind victory against Ole Miss last night. They trailed by 16. They end up keeping their postseason hopes alive with the victory. Here's what happened today. The chalk has been erased. You have to go back years and years to find the last time three of the top seeds lost in one day. Tennessee and Kentucky hopeful that does not happen. And with that, we welcome to courtside Tom Hart, John Sunville, Andy Kennedy, and Alyssa Lang will be on in a little bit. Big news for the Kentucky Wildcats. While he won't start, Reed Travis is back. He is available. And AK, he's a difference maker on both sides of the floor. No question. The first thing that he brings, Tom, is great experience. Fifth year senior, physical presence at the basket, and a guy that at the end of the clock, Cal can throw to and provide low post scoring. I also think with his position on the floor, it's going to allow spacing to let P.J. Washington does what he does. Kentucky only lost three conference games this season, but they dropped the first. That was on the road to Alabama. How'd the Tide do it then, Sonny? Well, what a way to start conference play when Alabama knocked off Kentucky. It was an impressive performance. Yes, there's power inside, but it was the outside game. Guys shot the ball well. Tevin Mack had 22. Devontae Hall, 11 points, all in the second half. But Kentucky made a comeback, and it came down to one possession at the end of the game. And Kentucky, with this shot by Hero, almost pulled off and got back in to win. But can Alabama walked away with a victory. It sets up for a great party afterwards and a great matchup tonight. Always a party in Nashville when Kentucky's here. Number one seed's on the line for them. What's on the line for Alabama? And how's Avery Johnson reacted for that? We say good evening to Alyssa Lang. Yeah, guys, Avery Johnson knows there's a lot on the line. When I talked to him when Alabama started tournament play, he said, we don't have any mulligans left. When I talked to him before this game, the word he used was desperate. He wants to see a desperate basketball team take the floor tonight and he said they have been talking about it since they got to Nashville he's confident that his guys know exactly what is on the line and that is their NCAA tournament future quarterfinal number three Alabama and Kentucky in front of a full house at Bridgestone Arena Fourth-ranked Kentucky now, number eight, Tennessee, in the nightcap. And a huge night for SEC hoops in the Music City. Bama controls the tip. They're going to let Herbert Jones bring it up. Guys, always great to have a start that Alabama played last night. Kentucky hasn't played in a while. Normally, takes a while to get going, especially on a neutral side of tournament time. Smith with his second consecutive start going to work against P.J. Washington. They tried to establish that in the second half in their big comeback last night. Big, strong kid. Got great initial post position. Kentucky coming off of a win Saturday against Florida. They only scored 66 points against the Gators, but took the air out of the ball. P.J. Washington. And Washington's been great inside, but it is a challenging team when you play the length of Alabama around the rim. No question. They're one of the few teams in the country that can match up with size and athleticism at the basket with the Cats. E.J. Montgomery has been starting since Travis's injury. 
Did not score in the game against Florida, but gets him off to a good start. By the way, we expect Reed Travis to be in the game very soon. Look at the starting five for Alabama, including Kyra Lewis. 17-year-old is the youngest active player in Division I basketball. Shot clock at six. Guy Riley that's, Norris. And the guy that's got to make shot is Rock, shots are Riley Norris. He missed four three-pointers last night. He's got to make buckets because he's going to get four or five attempts. Well, I thought they waited a little late in the clock to get to that action. Put Kyra Lewis in a, in a difficult predicament. Alabama has to attack sooner in the half court. So what's on the line for Alabama? They came in on the outside of the bubble trying to make it to the big dance again under Avery Johnson with a great run in the conference tournament. They have a 13 percent chance as of now and could jump to 60 with the win. Keldon Johnson. Ashton Hagen's followed short. And wow. it's blocked. Loose ball. Riley Norris with the tip. What well, great action early. Three on one for Bama. And finally, Dante Hall draws a foul. A frenetic, oh, me, a frenetic pace, partners. We all like frenetic, but this may be another level. How about take a deep breath, right? <laughs> if, you're, if you're the leader on the floor, somehow get it under control. A lot of nervous energy to yep. start. As we, as you said, Sonny, it's Kentucky's first game in the building, first game in the tournament. Hard to believe we've been here a few days. Yeah, that's right. A lot of eyes on P.J. Washington, and he threw it to the bench. And how about this? They don't double him until he puts it on the floor to make a move. They're, they're kind of saying, we'll body him away from the block. We'll see if he turns and faces. When he puts it down, gets in the lane, then we'll double. Fight him on the initial catch. Make him, make him step out 16-17. Attack him off that dribble. He will drift just a little bit on the offensive end. Not a great entry pass. Hall kicks it back out. Herbert Jones off the mark. It's hard to identify what Alabama wants to do offensively. Not hard to identify how important Reed Travis is in ovation for Big Blue Nation. It speaks to their appreciation of what he brings to the table, Tom. I think on the offensive end, he's like a fullback for P.J. Washington in the backfield. He clears the way and takes care of all the trash so Washington can have a clean lane. Well, besides how, how tough he is, A.K. said it right, he brings maturity. He's been around the block a few times. Kentucky with the takeaway. Tyler Hero. Difficult. That is a difficult, difficult shot. He makes it look easy, the but kid. that's why he's a special player. Yeah, the kid is awesome. He's got such confidence when he shoots it. Can shoot it deep, can put it on the floor all the way, but you just saw a mid-range shot that most guys can make. Nice cut by Norris, blocked by Hero, got it back. You can tell, guys, both teams trying to establish power in the paint. Everybody's going inside off the initial touch. And we're used to that from Kentucky, but Kentucky's playing a team that wants to do the same thing right back at them. Very unusual. Most teams with Kentucky will go from the outside. Jones mid-range. They need him to play well. In order for Alabama to have a chance to advance, Herb Jones has to be the player that we have seen him be in his short time at Alabama. P.J. Washington. Got it. What great improvement P.J. Washington has had from the outside this season. 42% beyond the three-point line. And not enough is made of the fact that this kid has really made the right decision by coming back, and he has made himself a much better player. As, as we talked, pick, pop, adds a whole new dimension to his game, P.J. Washington. Network Basketball is brought to you by Zaxby's. Chicken fingers, buffalo wings, salads. Find a location at zaxby's.com. Sure. Big Blue Nation 
in attendance all week here in Nashville and so are the Lakers Rob Palinka and Magic Johnson Magic's alma mater Michigan State on the outside looking in for one of those number one national seeds they knocked off Ohio State today in the Big Ten tournament and so the Spartans just waiting for perhaps some other dominoes to fall but it looks like this as of now Virginia with an early lead on Florida State will be a number one seed alongside Gonzaga Kentucky the third number one with North Carolina behind them and then Michigan State Duke Michigan and Tennessee waiting guys I think Tennessee's really low because a couple wins Tennessee could leap all the way into those top four yeah no doubt about it and obviously you see Kentucky up there the if they can get through tonight and Tennessee advances and the matchup tomorrow night has huge impact. Duke and Carolina later this evening in Charlotte. Reed Travis back on the floor. He told me on his way into the arena today that health wise he thought he could have played against Florida but that extra time off did wonders for his knees. He said I could have but I'm so glad I didn't. And Sonny you know this you take a few weeks off at the end oh, of the season. Yeah. This guy's going to have more pop in his legs than he's had in months. He's the old man obviously of that club. For more on Reed, here's Alyssa. Yeah, guys, during shoot around this morning, Reed was saying, or Coach Cal was saying that Reed's wearing that brace just because it kind of makes him feel more comfortable. He doesn't necessarily need it. And one thing he's been doing while he's been sitting out for the last couple of games is underwater treadmill work. So his cardio and endurance still just as good as it was when he went out. He told me the brace is bulky, but the stabilization he provides is reassuring. He said, I know it's necessary. Calvin Johnson to Tyler Hero. Oh, foul as he went up for the jam. A good sportsmanship afterwards. And a good play by Herbert Jones. Now you got to be careful, obviously. That will certainly yep. be a monitor review, and he hit him in the face. I'll be surprised if it's not a flagrant one. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Tried to make a play on the ball. But he elbowed him yep, right in the face. Right across the face. Again, we've got a good crew tonight. I'll be shocked if that's not flagrant one. Kentucky, to me, early, a little quicker to these 50-50 balls. Both teams a little out of sync offensively, going a little fast, as we talked about. But, but Kentucky coming up with plays. Let's talk about the flagrant foul. It's not just the shot to the face, but any time an offensive player especially is in a vulnerable position and there's potential for injury in this day and age, it will be an F1. I don't think there's any doubt. I mean, it's it's easy to call. We saw Herbert Jones make a block last night from behind that was spectacular. So he's used to going up, but that is definitely a flagrant one. And and I want to tell you, I don't think based on intent because he did try to swing at the ball. But when you hit a kid in the face, it could even be flagrant two. So Kentucky will have two free throws coming for three, uh, Tyler Hero, who's 58 of 59 from the line in SEC play, and Kentucky will retain possession. I appreciate the expedient manner that they did that. Sometimes these reviews last forever. Good job by the officials. Good job out of Birmingham. How about this as a freshman to shoot 94% from the free throw line? Wow. Unheard of. He's, He's the only guy in the gym I would take in a free throw shooting contest over you. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler Hero, the SEC Newcomer of the Year from Milwaukee, originally committed to Wisconsin. When Kentucky came calling, he said, I don't have any choice but to go to Lexington. And his offensive game that is transferred with it. The last month and a half has taken Kentucky to another level. Now, Tom, you saw this squad when they went to the Bahamas, and Tyler Hero's terrific there, averaging sure. over 17 points a game. But he got off to a rough start, like most freshmen do. But his, his performance throughout SEC play was spectacular. The kid's a real gamer, and he makes shots at the end of the clock. He can make tough ones, and he is more than just a shooter. As you see, an excellent entry pass there to Reed Travis. This is Kentucky's best five on the floor right now with the return of Reed Travis. This is who John Calipari wants to roll with. And Bama is long and can get to shooters in a hurry. Long and athletic, Sonny. They close out quickly, take space away, doing a great job on the defensive end. Tevin Mack coming off of a monster game tonight at the rim. Nobody stops the ball. Higgins has it roll off. 
And Dazon Ingram rolled right over the top of the basketball. It'll be Alabama's ball on the tie-up. AK, I made a point last night. I love how the officials are officiating this tournament. They're letting guys play. That's right. Players appreciate that. They kind of understand what's going to be called, what's not. They can all be aggressive. And I know in our opening, we were talking about Avery told his team he wants them to play desperate. I see a desperate team in Alabama. Different vibe than they started the game with last night. A couple of upset specials according to the seating line earlier today with Florida knocking off number one LSU. The last time three of the top seeds lost in the same day in this tournament was 1983. That's when number one seed Kentucky lost a nine seed Ben. John Petty with the triple. John Petty only took two shots last night, made one, didn't even really look to shoot. He's a shooter. When they put you in the game, shoot the basketball. He knocks in his first one. To that kid's credit, he had the huge tip dunk at the end, which allowed them to be here yes, tonight. He but in order for them to have a chance to win, he's going to have to make perimeter shots. Mack with the left hand, brought down by Johnson. Numbers the other way for UK. Alabama has missed breaks, about three of them already. Opportunities on one end. And when you don't convert, you're too late getting back defensively. Kentucky with another easy bucket. John Calipari letting his opinion know. He thought that should have been a Bama turnover. He would be awesome at charades. <laughs> 22 and 3 in SEC tournament games. He's won six tournament championships. Here's what had him riled up. I think Cal was defending over here. Well, he can't, so he's not even letting the guy referee. The triple team. <laughs> Lewis blocked by Travis. Lewis has to make the wraparound pass. He's got a teammate for a dunk. Didn't make it. Two points the other way. Big swing, four point swing. And Kentucky is running. They are pushing and running. And Dante Hall turns it over. Catch running again. Alabama's not at its best when they're in a hurry. Tyler Hero! Timeout, Bama! In 34 seconds, Kentucky's put together a 7 0 run. Again, Alabama can't be sloppy because what happens, Big Blue will run, and it's like a home court advantage. They've pushed, they've got to the rim, and we talked about the freshman that's got all the swag in this league. He'll pull it, he'll take it close, but when he gets it going deep, the roof blows off. Great tempo. He has shown us the whole package early. He made the right play there, didn't rush it. As you said, Alabama's playing a little bit out of their comfort zone, making poor decisions. This kid is playing right at his steady pace. Talking with the Kentucky staff earlier today, the thought was that Alabama's offense is at its best when it's sporadic, when it's random, when they get you on your heels. If, if, if Alabama pushes, it's one that's good. They've got athletes. It's the decision making at the end of pushes. They have wasted three breaks, two on one, three on two, wasted them. Turnovers go the other way. They've missed opportunities to make good passes to each other. They're in a hurry, they're in a rush, but that's what Kentucky does to you. Avery Johnson Jr. on the floor now for Bama. Dazon Ingram has it blocked. Another one for Travis. Emmanuel quickly. And one. Count. Great defensive possession leads to another transition opportunity. Emmanuel quickly just checking in and making his presence known. And what do we understand mostly about John Calipari's teams? Historically, they're great on the defensive end. And when they can guard like this Wildcat team has been playing in the last month and a half, they get out, they get breaks, and their athletes finish plays. Maybe the most impressive Kentucky defensive team I've seen since they had Anthony Davis. I agree with you. And they're doing it with freshmen on the perimeter. One of John Calipari's best jobs. 10-0 run for Kentucky over the last minute of game time to open this up. What does Alabama need to do in the half court? Well, think this. Who can give you answers? You got Petty on one side. You got Mack on the other who had a terrific game last night with 21. He had 22 against Kentucky early. They're your shooters. Can Gavin Smith get buckets down low? He's not a big bucket getter, but they did pound it into him early in this ball game. Well, Mack was the difference maker last night. Let's see if he can get going again in game two. P.J. Washington. He'll go to the line. Alex Reese with the foul. 
How athletic is P.J. Washington? Active Makes it hands. Steal. Active and, hands. And then pushes it himself. You know, things we talk about as coaches all the time, Sonny, have active hands. Be alert. Be aware. That's all that was. Active hands leads to an opportunity for him to cash in at the strike. He took it like a three-man. Once he got the steal, he pushed it at a high speed. Still had body control, almost finished that play. Two free throws for P.J. Washington. Sophomore from Dallas out of Finley Prep went through the draft process in the offseason. In fact, he and Reed Travis were part of the same workouts at a couple of places, including with Minnesota. And Tommy, he made the right decision mm. by coming back as a sophomore. He has certainly improved his stock. He had the dominant run in the middle of the SEC play in 10 games. He averaged over 21 points a game. Big possession early in this game for the Tide right here. Great cut. Reese, the jam. What a pass. Great pass by Junior. Great cut by Alex Reese. People categorize him as a catch and shoot four man. Caught him sleeping, got an easy one. It brings to an end an 11 0 Kentucky run. Almost a must have basket at that possession. So now Cal will be deliberate in their half court. Oh, play through PJ in that mid post. Tyler Hero. Mm. Oh, oh, oh. Another tough shot at the end of the clock. Well, it's kid, hard to defend. Special. The shot is so good. He's got great legs, so it's great lift. It's quick lift. He can shoot the ball quickly off the top of the fingertips. You can't get to the shot. Alabama running a little horns action. Two bigs at the high post looking high low. Another loose ball. Travis with the foul. He has been active on the defensive end with a steal and a couple of blocks. Kentucky has doubled up Alabama. They went on an 11-0 run to do it. And the Cats looking like a number one seed here tonight against the Tide. Twenty two eleven Kentucky on top of Alabama look at lower Broadway Nashville one of the best hosts you could ever hope for a good thing SEC has planted its flag here we'll be here for a while quarterfinal Friday already one semi set Florida took down number one LSU what an amazing finish in that one Andrew Nemar with the game winning three for the second straight year number one goes down in the quarterfinals and Florida is now in the NCAA tournament for the first time since 1991 the chalk lost their first game the one and four seeds and then later on tonight over in Charlotte it's Duke and Carolina so a lot on the line for both Kentucky and Tennessee as they take the floor in quarterfinal action today Tom Hart John Sunville Andy Kennedy not the least of which of course is a number one seed which could be decided as early as tomorrow between Kentucky and Tennessee yeah it could be and obviously the way Kentucky has come out tonight sometimes you think they may struggle slowly they haven't they've kind of like putting their foot down saying we are a number one seed. they're anxious to play there's been a lot of basketball that has already occurred and this is their first opportunity I I think you're exactly right. They want to make sure they solidify their spot at the top. Because we know where a regional is, and, and all Kentucky fans know in Louisville, just right up the road. Cats would love to be there. Kentucky started this game three for ten. They've made their last five cents. If there was any question about getting used to this building, it didn't take them long. Off the inbounds, Petty. And a Bama turnover. Good execution, though. You're always anxious to see out of a timeout, an inline, out of bounds situation. They got their best shooter with a clean look. Those are the ones that John Petty's going to have to knock down for Alabama to continue in this tournament. And he can't be back, so he's got to keep shooting. A couple of subs in the game for Kentucky, including Jamal Baker and Nick Richards, who's had playing time hard to come by lately. Here's Richards. <laughs> Great energy off the bench. Wow. They are a step quicker than Alabama. EJ with a little ill advised shot, but he chased it down and yeah, made up did. for it before his coach could get mad. <laughs> 
Additional minutes for Avery Johnson Jr. against the Kentucky pressure. Kelvin Johnson commits his first. As you said, a, a, an uncharacteristic quick possession and quick shot, but he did chase it down and an easy finish, easy lob, terrific play. Nick Richards has had a tough couple of weeks of practice, according to the Kentucky folks, which is why he did not take advantage of the opportunity with Travis out to get more minutes. Tom, this Kentucky team is so active defensively. Everybody's quick on their feet. They're getting every shot line they can, making it tough. Smith bobbled the entry pass and then couldn't regather. Kelvin Johnson to Montgomery. And our third tie-up of the game will keep the arrow this way. We are at six turnovers already for Alabama. Five of which, Sonny, have been steals. Steals are even more critical because they lead to broken floor opportunities of which Kentucky's taken advantage. Speaking of number one seeds, Virginia likely to be considered a lock as a number one seed trails Florida State early by double digits a quarter of the way through the action in the ACC in Charlotte. Maybe that would open up the door to two SEC teams getting a one seed. Avery Johnson Jr. pushes it. Here's Riley Norris. Active hands there on the defensive end for Alabama creating turnovers of their own. Dante Hall has range. Kelvin Johnson to Richards who gets fouled. Second on Herb Jones. Between games and later tonight, SEC Now will be by with Dari, Pat, Damian, and Antoine. Maybe AK with a guest appearance will be here the rest of the night. Preview the semis tomorrow and have post-game coverage of all the quarterfinal games. Nobody covers the SEC like we do. SEC Now is also available on the app, so you can watch anywhere. You know, we made the point that both teams were making a concerted effort to throw it inside. Alabama's kind of gone away from that in the last few possessions. Uh, and as a result, they, they've struggled to get clean looks. And at times, it can be the length of the defenders on Kentucky's team, right? They get it. And even if Galen Smith gets it inside, he's not a big-time scorer. So he's not comfortable with the height advantage that Kentucky had. So it's been loose balls, tip aways, and they haven't gotten clean looks. You just get that feeling that Alabama is a step slower and in that form they're rushing things on that offensive end. And last night when they made the big comeback against Ole Miss they were able to pound inside where they had a decisive size advantage. Yeah. That advantage is is not there against Kentucky there. Nick Richards giving the Cats some really good minutes here in this first half and they're able to rest Reed Travis Hall looking inside. But it's fine to get it there. in. Oh my goodness. That's what they were doing last night. Great duck in. Body on body. Good strong finish for Galen Smith. So part one is to get a bucket like that. And part two is last night. They got some turnovers second half against Ole Miss. Can their defense bother Kentucky in a half court set? I think it has been effective in the half yep. court. The problem is Kentucky has been able to get out in the open floor. Half court, I think Alabama has been very solid defensively. Galen Smith may be a little shooken up. The officials stop play to make sure he's all right. He looks gassed. Is it shooken or shaken? I've always wondered. Uh, yes. Or straight yes. up, either way. Straight. <laughs> stirred? Mm -hmm. I prefer stirred. <laughs> Interesting to me that they're having Herb Jones handle the basketball with Kentucky's length in the perimeter. You know, but he's he's probably a better facilitator than finisher. They like to get it to him at that elbow, but as, as we talked about, there's not a lot of size advantage because of the length of Kentucky's backcourt. And Kyra had some issues at time with Hagen's gardening. Hagen's is so good on ball defender. He's got active hands. Anytime it's around him, he's really good. Co-defensive player of the year, and Kyra Lewis throws it away. Hero's got Hagen's. Norris somehow stole it away, and then Bama gets a timeout. So they need, they need to wipe off that basketball. I mean, it just seems like there's a lot of looseness, a lot of sweat on that ball. That's kind of strange. This looked like an easy break right here. Now he just loses, simply loses control. Almost turned out to be a good pass. 
He's not going, quite. going a little fast. You saw him yeah. pick his head up. Ball gets away from him. Kentucky is already up eight to nothing on points off turnovers. Uh, that could have been ten. What's Kyle saying to his team right now? Well, I think he's got to be pleased with the way that they have come out. Their approach has been outstanding defensively. They're not getting Bama anything easy. I think he's saying what we're saying. Slow down offensively. Turn the ball from weak side to strong side and back. Let's try to score inside out. He's just saying a, lo a lot louder than we are. Yeah. <laughs> more, more emphatically. Uh huh. He's got, he's, got, he's got love to start this game. Yeah. The way his guys are playing, the energy is so good defensively. Again, everything sloppy early when your first night out on the offensive end. Everybody gets in a little bit of a hurry. Shooters shoot it more quickly. Sometimes some long shots. Avery Johnson's got to figure out what they can get going on the offensive end. To your point, Tom, now you've got Herb Jones being guarded by Baker. A little more favorable matchup for her. Good strong drive. It's a first on Baker. Keldon Johnson a moment ago picked up his second. So that put him on the bench. Great cut right there. That was a great cut. If he could have handled it, he would have got an easy two just based off eye contact. Lewis has been rattled just a bit in this first half. Youngest player in Division One basketball, just 17 years old. Here's Riley Norris. Shot clock winding down, and Bama does not get a shot off. Ooh. Sometimes when you watch Alabama, it gets so crowded in the lane area that if uh, if a Jones or, or, or Lewis take the ball off the dribble, there's nowhere to go. They got too many bodies in that lane, no space, no avenues to drive. And Sonny, now they're sitting on seven turnovers uh, in less than 12 minutes of game action. They've got to do a better job with ball security. Out to Baker is a good shooter. John Calipari demanded Jamal Baker shoot earlier this season when he first got on the floor. Said, that light isn't just green, it's nuclear green. Here, Music City, Nashville, Tennessee, home of the Country Music Hall of Fame. Kentucky has doubled up on Bama early, 7.50 to 4 to go in the first half. Let's take a look at who's taking the next step. Brought to you by Regions Bank. Well, the guy that's taking the next step is Tyler Hero. He is Off the charts, good, great pass there to his freshman cohort, Keldon Johnson, right here. Good initial push, finished by Baker in transition, where Kentucky is up eight to nothing in fast break opportunities in here. Great poise, great tempo, lets the game come to him. Set, smash. Here's a look at Kentucky's offense. They put together a 17 to four run. Of Bulk of those coming in the paint. You're talking earlier, Sonny, about Kyra Lewis maybe being caught up in the moment. Tyler Hero is also a freshman. He's not as young as Kyra Lewis, but he's a freshman. Yet this moment seems to be what he was born for. No, no doubt, Tom. That's a good way to put it. He seems to be best in the biggest moments on stage, and, and he takes, accepts the challenge. And again, he's got a swag to him that you rarely see for kids his age especially guys that shoot it like he does, all those things. He accepts and the challenges, and he's responded well this season. Tevin Mack inside, blocked by Travis again, and Hero has it. Great defensive presence, as we talked about in the open. It's more than just offense when you bring back Reed Travis. Offensive foul on Travis. Let's find out what happened with Avery in that Alabama huddle. Eh, Alyssa? Yeah, guys, that Alabama huddle still very upbeat. Assistant coaches, guys on the bench telling each other, hey, you just got to believe. One thing they mentioned, though, Kentucky's defense starting to add a couple blocks on that stat sheet. Avery Johnson said, hey, that means one of your guys is open. You have to turn around and find him. There's two guys going up at one time. That's why they've got so many blocks. That means you've got a guy open. Three blocks for Reed Travis. Not necessarily part of his game defensively. And, here, and here's a challenge, what Alyssa was saying. When you're a young player, you don't know where weak side defenders are necessarily coming from. If you're a veteran player like Ingram, he's got to make a better play. He knows where the guys are coming from and where to make the pass. He lost his shoe. Sonny, it's one thing to know it, it's another thing to do it. That's right. You still got to do it against high level players. And I, and I feel as if Kentucky's making them play a little faster yeah. than they would like. Bama in the bonus now. Dazon Ingram sat out about half that possession after his Nikes came off. Had to get it 
relays right under the t right under the uh, basket. They just had it slip back on and said, "Look, I'm in the right position." And Ashton Higgins ends up getting charged for his first foul. They might want to take a look and see if we've got a hook and hold on that play. Two most famous words in college basketball this season. Yeah, you saw Ingram when he put it on the floor. He has the ability to get to the lane. It's just a decision. Does he make the right one when he gets there? Watch 12 and 2. There was no foul call. Uh, there was a foul call on Hagen's, excuse me. And they're looking, I assume, to see if Hagen's with his left arm had nothing there. That's just a, a common foul. Yeah, that's a yeah, basketball nothing there. Play. You're right, though, Sonny. Dazon Ingram's a big, strong guard who's been at Alabama a long time. He has got to get downhill, use his size and strength to create an advantage, and then find the open Alabama player. And Andy, when I watch Ingram, what I look when he puts when he gets to the lane, he's got to lower his rear end and get stronger with his base. Don't get knocked off your base because now you're off balance. He's big enough. He's strong enough to finish plays. Make he, he'd rather pass. He's a pass first kind of guy. Good teammate to be around. He can read things, but he can't allow Kentucky to bump him off his base. After the review, the officials confirm common foul. It puts Dazon Ingram at the free throw line. Mr. Basketball his senior season at Theodore High School in Alabama, and he's got another shot coming. He made the two big free throws last night mm -hmm. that allowed them to beat Ole Miss down the stretch uh, so that they could have this opportunity. And that's exactly what this is, a great opportunity for Alabama. Those are the only two free throws he made. He also had two big free throws at the tail end of the Kentucky win with 22 seconds left back on January 5th. You know, they were down 14 last night at halftime to Ole Miss. Totally out of the game. Had no feeling that they would make that comeback that they did. We'll explain to folks how it happened. Well, Ole Miss wasn't very good second half. They had a lot of turnovers. Alabama was good on defense, but they turnovers led to easy points on the offensive end. They got back in it. I don't see, here's Nick Richards. Wow, that's nice. I don't see Kentucky having a half like Ole Miss did last night. No, I don't either. And I tell you what, they are hitting on all cylinders. Each one of their guys are very active on defense and offensively. They're sharp. Ball is moving in and out, side to side. Been a while since second semester sophomore Nick Richards had a game like this. Here's Dante Hall. This is the end of the floor that has put Kentucky in a position to make a real run in the NCAA tournament. Yes. Yeah. They are off the charts good defensively, offensively efficient, but defensively is where they are a special group. It's one of the issues that Richards had in practice the last couple of weeks, just not handling passes inside it leads to a Kentucky turnover but if this guy's playing like this oh it can give him minutes off the bench that's icing on the cake for Cal most despite he's always going to give you blocks he's always going to try defensively when he's not fouling if he can give you an offense the big time hook maybe the most impressive shot to this point from a low post guy uh, that is an added bonus for Cal's team 6 11 jump hook can't stop it, right? So he gets in, like you said, he'll make blocks. If he gets uh, 15 minutes a game, it's putting stuff on the offensive end. Ah, these Wildcats. Tevin Mack hasn't scored yet. He had 22 in the first meeting. He had 21 last night. Dante Hall is 0 for 5 for Alabama. Reese. That one affected by EJ Montgomery. Nine blocks for the Cats. Tyler Hero for three. Three on three. Reese on well, second I, thought it, drills it. And that's what Reese does, catch and shoot. Now that was difficult because once you ball faked it, it's hard to gather yourself again and shoot it. But every time Alabama makes one, you think that's almost a must possession. Well, I agree. It was and that's a sigh of relief. He made a hard shot, but they're gonna have to make hard shots to yeah. beat a team that guards as well as Kentucky. Two-man game with Hero and Richards. Now the left-handed hook. Good defense, making him turn the other way. I agree. Counters are overrated. I wish he would have power <laughs> dribbled and got to that right yes. hook. Yes. Petty. Kicks Reese again. Two in a row again. 
You need someone in tournament time to step up and be your savior. Last night, Tevin Mack. Tonight, maybe, just maybe, Alex Reese is the guy that, and that keeps play, him alive. And that play was made by John Petty. Great dribble penetration, making the extra pass, drive, drift, open. So that one was based just off a broken floor. And then moments ago, off the dish. Drive, drift, know where your teammate is. Alex Reese, back to back, brings the tide back. Alabama has scored 10 of the last 12. Developing situation continues in Charlotte. Florida State leads Virginia 29 to 19. Alabama needs to continue winning to sleep comfortably the night before Selection Sunday. And a win tonight against Kentucky would drastically improve their odds to make it back to the postseason under Avery Johnson. Remember, they won three in this tournament last year. Came in on the bubble, got a Colin Sexton buzzer beater to start their weekend, and made it back into the tournament. Guys, the first game of the session this afternoon, LSU was just hammering Florida. Thought they'd be up 20 and a half times, right? Didn't get it done. Florida comes back. Florida wins the ball game. Has a little bit of the feeling. Not quite because Kentucky's playing well. But again, you think Kentucky would be up about 15, 16 right now. They're not. A couple of differences, wow. including <laughs> Kentucky having their head coach on the bench right now, Tyler Hero with the jumper. In other news, Texas A&M announced that they have let Billy Kennedy go after taking the Aggies to the big dance two out of the last three years. E.J. Montgomery, the foul, his second. Sonny, we've talked about it the entire game. Kentucky needs a basket, kind of switch momentum back. Player making a play, catch it, wipe it, get to your spot, elevate, make a hard shot look easy. 6-5, that's the difference, folks. He's 6-5, and on the step back, and how quick the release is, hard to get to that shot. I love his balance. Yeah. I always think you can determine whether or not a, a guy's a good shooter based on his balance. Tyler Hero plays with a great, strong base. A lot of folks on Broadway late last night would not be labeled good shooters. <laughs> Galen Smith at the free throw line. Another one coming for the sophomore from Clinton, Mississippi. Back into the starting lineup last couple of games after he started the first seven this year. man game for the catch with their two best offensive players now to your point Sonny he puts it on the floor and Alabama comes with a double Washington straight ahead Higgins the point guard in on the glass and out to Baker what he's in there for breaks your back yeah good defensive possession don't clean it up with a rebound leads to a three-point shot by a specialist Reese a host of fakes, and he's been the main offensive weapon with a team-high 10 for Bama. How about the value of P.J. Washington, who he goes in the post, but when he gives it up, he can move so quickly to the outside or back in. He's got so much movement that he brings out any of the bigs that Alabama has that normally they defend the rim. His greatest strength is his versatility. Got a bump. And a whistle against Bama with seven seconds on the shot clock. Kentucky was in control early. Alabama put together a comeback, and they're trying to fight to make it a single-digit deficit and keep it there at the break. John Calipari knows what's on the line. A number one seed hanging in the balance for his Cats, who hope for a national title, and Avery trying to get the Tide back to the tournament. Uh, we're just a few minutes from halftime. As you well know, you're going to get the four of us. We'll show you how Florida advanced, dramatics, how Auburn advanced, and look ahead to Tennessee, Mississippi State. What are you seeing behind us? I'm seeing Alex Reese. You know what he reminds me of? A difference maker from the three-point line. <laughs> Alabama, <laughs> body blows. They need to continue to go to the paint. Got to take care of the basketball. Too many turnovers, sloppy play by Alabama. All right, gentlemen, it's back to you. Why don't we keep our mics open if we want to be more involved, though? What do you say? <laughs> well, we don't always invite people to our party, but sure. <laughs> you know, why not? 
Why not? Only thing better than a three-man crew out there is a seven-man seven crew. <laughs> <laughs> Lay out, hey, Coach Kennedy. A Lay out. Hey, hey, AK. Hey, AK, you good with Alyssa taking your sideline job? I, 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 she does a much better job. Uh, I, didn't, I set a pretty low bar. Dari, we were helping America on that one. Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> Eight-man crew. That's going to take two Ubers to get us back after this one. <laughs> hey, Antoine, let me ask you, though. You know what it's like to shine in the postseason, especially at this event. Can you identify what players like to be on this stage? Yeah, I can identify right now what Alex Reese is going through. My freshman <laughs> year, um, I wasn't getting much playing time, and, and I got an opportunity in the SEC tournament and took full advantage of it, so he's doing that right now. I don't know if he can get to MVP. I was the MVP. I don't know if he can get to that. <laughs> I, don't that. I don't know if he can get that far, but he's, he's having a good, good game right now. Oh, yeah. Antoine, that's why they call me the point guard. I set you up for that one. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. You knew he was taking the shot. That's the beauty of Antoine. <laughs> All right, we'll see you all at halftime. You Fantastic work all week. Working overtime. Here's Hagens from the top of the key. I like the look, though, Sonny. Easy Inside, look. out, yeah. just missed it. Good, clean look, good action. I mean, it's an easy look. That's what they want on the offensive end. Alabama shooting 31% here in this first half. But, Tommy, you know why? Kentucky already has nine block shots. Pretty amazing. Got Ingram's improvement shooting the basketball. This year, 40% beyond the three-point line. Last year, he was at 25%. Huge difference, huge numbers, because most guys play him for the drive. Alabama's getting great production off their bench. First, Reese. Now, days on Ingram. And Ingram's got to guard Hero and stay close. Got walloped by Washington on the screen. Nick Richards fouled by Reese. That's a second on Reese, so that might be an issue for his offensive production. Should be a loaded SEC representation in the postseason and Sunday at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, our SEC Now Selection Special. We'll break down the brackets, preview all the games the SEC teams are playing in. You can always watch it on the ESPN app from anywhere. Could we get two one seeds out of this conference? I think it's going to be difficult because Let's say, obviously, the only two still in play are, are one Kentucky and, and number two Tennessee. And if they both hold serve, they got to play in the semifinals, yeah, which will no, be difficult no, I, for the loser to get to the one line. I would agree. When you look at it, it, it would be tough for Tennessee to jump all the way up there. And if they were to, let's say they both win, hold chalk, and Tennessee wins, uh, it, would they even jump over Kentucky? Maybe they would, but then Kentucky would probably drop out of that one seat. Tough to get two of them. Virginia and North Carolina shared the regular season title in the ACC. They're still alive in Charlotte. It'll be Carolina and Duke later tonight. Zion uh, was pretty good on his comeback, huh, guys? Yeah, not a lot of rust there. <laughs> they went all the way to China to find him some new shoes. Probably found in the same place. AK gets his suits. Richards no. commits his first. I made a call for him a few days ago just to make sure America needed him back. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it seemed like anyway. Dazon Ingram to the free throw line. And what does that do to the, for the committee when they look at Duke? Now, if Duke wins the tournament, then maybe that's different. They win well, the SEC tournament. You know, with all due respect, what I said before he came back, that Duke was obviously not a number one seed. They probably weren't even a top ten team without him. They almost lo lost it home to Wake Forest. Right. And now, to be fair, on the other side of that coin, with him, they are remarkable. Yeah, they're really good. Side to side, good Excellent ball movement. Ball movement. Yep. Can they finish it with an effective shot? B.J. Washington, challenge, foul, and one. Best offensive possession of the game for either team. Incredible patience for Kentucky, and then get it to your playmaker at the end of the clock. And it's not necessarily just ball movement. Look at the body movement. Guys are moving side to side, in and out. Everybody's cutting. So now all of a sudden you said, AK, can you finish it off? All of a sudden you get a bucket, you get a good drive, you get a finish, and then and one. So what a possession almost to perfection. What does Chuck Daly say? Chuck Daly, the late great Chuck Daly, yeah. would say, Offense is spacing and spacing is offense. Great spacing by the catch. 
Ingram with the board for Alabama. They're only trailing by nine. And to your point, Sonny, about the first game of the day, does it feel like Kentucky, like LSU, missed out on an opportunity to build a larger lead? I, I don't think they've missed out on I think they've played terrific. I thought earlier today LSU missed an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Kentucky's played well. Alabama's hanging in there. No question. Fighting, getting great bench production, as we've already touched on. Kentucky with the seven turnovers. I'm sure that's something that Cal is going to address at the half. And you know, Andy, you've got to have guys unexpectedly produce for you tournament time. Hagens all the way to the rim. Known as a defensive drive. specialist, also an offensive threat. Shot clock is off. Mack from the corner. Pull Alabama's it. missed a couple threes wow. late. Here's Lewis. I thought pull it back out. Now you've missed a chance. You're going to give Kentucky time to get a bucket at the end of the half. That's a freshman yeah. playing on a big stage for the first time. I think he must have lost track of how much time was still on the clock. But, you know, Mack took the first one. He's deep in the corner. He shoots it with 22 seconds left. Yeah, but there was still, I think, wasn't there a right. shot clock still in play then? No, no, no. no. They no. just pushed it up the break. Clock was so off. So Tevin Mack, who really hadn't scored, so he's going to say, I'm going to get me a bucket. And then Tyra you, Lewis, yeah. you know, you, you, you bail it I'll out with a long yeah. rebound. Yes. And now all of a sudden, it, it could be a huge swing. Mental mistake. It, it, but probably because of the rebound, Lewis, again, when you're a floor general, you got to know it, right? Back it out. Get one possession now. Again, they're going to get the ball back, see if they can score, but they're going to give up two right here to Baker. Exactly. Baker hadn't shot a lot of free throws on the season. Now just four for seven. He missed the first eight games coming back from knee injury. And when he came back, he was instant offense for the Cats. And Bama worked so hard to fight their way back. Now it's back to 12. Big last possession. Ingram with the drive and fouled by Hagens. Second on Hagens. Ingram has had an aggressive first half. He is, he's taken it off the bounce. He's, he's gone to the rim, gone to the free throw line. Two yeah. of three from the line. He is so much better going to his left hand. Obviously, he's a left-handed player. Kentucky needs to sit on that left hand, push him right. When he goes left, gets that big old shoulder on you, he can typically get right where he is, back to that free throw line. Let's go back, size of the body, right? 6'5", 215, so he, he can get where he probably wants to go. Does he finish? Sometimes. He's got to be better at that area, but tonight he's been pretty good. Richards back in the game for Kentucky. He's already played more minutes in this first half than he did the entire game against Florida after starting three games ago against Tennessee. Another one coming for Ingram, less than four seconds remaining on the game clock. And Sonny, at about the eight-minute mark, if I would have said, hey, the way this game has unfolded, if you're Alabama and you go to the halftime down 10, you would have probably taken it yeah, because Kentucky's it. been very impressive in the first yep, half. Yep, no doubt. Last possession for Kentucky. Looking for Washington. Back to Hagens with a full head of steam. Clock at one, floater. Well-designed play at the end of clock for Kentucky. The Cats in their first game this week in Nashville shoot 47% in the first half. They lead by 10. Cows with Alyssa. Thoughts on the first half? I can't hear you. Thoughts on the first half? I can't hear you. What are your thoughts on the first half? Uh, we have a couple guys not competing to where they need to be. Offensively, we're trying to make crazy plays and try to just play basketball. But defensively, I like what I saw. Thanks, Coach. Dari, back up to you. as big a lead as 14 for Kentucky. Alabama did battle back, hit a couple of threes. Alex Reese contributing 10. Rick Barnes in Tennessee getting ready to go in the nightcap tonight. They've got Mississippi State, too. The top 10 teams in college basketball, Kentucky and Tennessee, including the SEC Player of the Year, two-time winner, Grant Williams. Wonder what he's listening to. Number one, LSU went down in their first game. Florida with the game winner. And then Auburn ousted South Carolina. So chalk has been a race in the top half. See what happens in the bottom half. Welcome back, everybody. Tom Hart alongside John Sunvold and Andy Kennedy. AK, you don't have to look far to find great talent in this one tonight. No, a lot of really good players. And I think both teams are really going at each other. Kentucky has been tremendous 
in the first half, led by this tremendous player, Tyler Hero, showing you the whole package. The pull up in the lane, the step back from three, end of clock, strong moves back to back. Tyler Hero leading Kentucky in that first 20. He's playing with style, brought to you by Belt. Meanwhile, in Big Blue Nation, defense never goes out of style. Tom, their defense has been active with their hands and with their feet, and they have challenged at the rim. They have nine block shots, which is a season high already, just in one half of basketball. When the ball goes on the floor and it gets to the paint, active defensively, not only a mature guy, but the weak side help, and guys are coming. Two blocks that you see, nine in the first half. Alabama's got to make sure when they get to the paint, kick it out, find some open shooters. Six different catch with the block. Reed Travis has three to find out what Avery Johnson had to say. Here's Alyssa Lane. Yeah, guys, I just caught up with Coach Johnson, and he's talking about exactly what you guys were just mentioning, the block shots, and he's not happy with the amount of turnovers that his tie team has committed. He said, we're giving it up too much at the glass. My guys are playing too erratic at the rim, and that's not Alabama basketball. They've kind of been erratic offensively, I don't know, all season. But his point is finishing, I suppose, because they've got Kentucky on their heels at times. No question. They've got to, they can't settle. I like the ball movement here right out of the half. Good penetration and pitch. Reese has been the savior for Alabama so far tonight. He's got a dozen. And you notice, hey, Avery Johnson knows yeah. what he's doing. Dazon Ingram and, and Alex Reese both get the second half start. <laughs> I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> Reese, who had 10 in the first half, Ingram was seven. Avery knows that they've got to win this game. Hey. Reed Travis with the board and the putback. That's got to feel good for him. First basket in a few weeks. You better put a body on him. You can't let him rebound three feet from the hoop. Petty. And Travis with the board. He has been an impact player all over the place for Kentucky. First game yeah. back after missing five. He's made P.J. Washington better just by his attendance tonight. Well, people don't understand the mobility of P.J. Washington. He can run. He can cut. He can slash. He can post. Big time. Great change of direction in the open floor. Cats up 10-2 in transition. Alabama stars from previous nights have yet to show up. Here's Hero with the step through. Man, he's good. Alabama pushing the other way. An air ball from a foot away. Three on two for Kentucky. Tyler Hero, transition three. That was the right decision, though, by Ashton Hagens. He set that complete play up. Good look by Hero. He had it about a half second too late. He kind of lobbed it over there. I don't know why he went underhanded. Give it to the shooter when he's ready. First bucket for Dante Hall. Tevin Mack, who had 21 last night, still has yet to score. So Hall and Mack obviously need to, need to show up in this one for Ben. Washington. You need stops, you need rebounds. And Tom, then you can get on the offensive end. But the key for this Kentucky team is they've just been so aggressive. And they rebound, and Reed Travis gets that first one to go. And again, it's his physicality. But again, here's the mobility. How does a 6'8 guy that's 235 coming at you step through? And then Hero's just been good all night. Most guys stop, pull up, pull up jumper. He's looking for contact, doesn't get the whistle, still finishes the play. I like the way that P.J. Washington has come up much more aggressive in this half. Every time he's touched it, he has driven it to the rim. Kentucky is plus eight on the glass so far tonight, leading by 12. Hero off the screen. Good post. Reggie. There, there's something about that rim and that board. That's about the that's the third wedgie we've seen in the tournament. Think it needs to be adjusted? Yeah, there's something there. You that's always have to adjust your wedgies. What kind of question is that, Tom? 
They are trying to get the ball to PJ. They're making a concerted effort. This guy's been a little quiet. Yeah, they haven't even mentioned his name. Lewis with the skip back to Reese. Ooh. Wow. Kids had a tough night to this point. Yeah. And it's going to lead to a back. Good hustle by Dazon Ingram. That would have been, that would have brought the house down. Yeah, it really, and Lewis has had a tough night. He, he's going to size up as a point guard, would love to size up a big guy and loses it off his toe. Does get back to not allow Kelvin Johnson to get an easy dunk. And again, we're not the only ones that see that as Avery Johnson's got John Petty at the table. So what do you say to him when he comes over to the bench? Anything? Well, Avery's going to be super positive. Yeah. Avery, Avery is a great be. point guard. He loves Kyra Lewis. Kyra Lewis has been a tremendous player for Alabama as a freshman. The kid you can see on the bench is being very hard on himself, and you can see the staff yep. trying to support him. Hey, man, get your head up. Keep fighting. There's a long time to go in this game. They're telling him you're going to make great plays down the stretch. Hang in there. You're going to make great plays for us. We're going to need you. Here's Avery Johnson, the former point guard, led Southern to a pair of NCAA tournament appearances with the pat on the backside. Avery led the nation in assists at an NCAA record playing for Ben Joe. Heroes doing a good job on Mac, has not allowed him avenues and then challenges every jump shot. Great, great defense, Sonny. You're yep. exactly right for a true freshman. That kid has made huge improvements on that end of the floor. Tevin Mack now 0 for 7 tonight. The lob. Travis with a grimace after he bumped into Reese. Hey, people were asking me, hey, do you play him now in the SEC tournament? Do you wait to the NCAA tournament? That's the perfect example why you have to play him when yeah. he's ready to play. Timing is something that you cannot simulate in, in drills or in practice. Reed Travis needs these minutes in order to get back into shape. Reed Travis walking into the building today was telling me about his excitement to get back in the game. And, and after getting to know him this year, he's not just excited about this game. He's from Minneapolis. That's he's right. excited That's about right. getting to the Final Four. That's why he's at Kentucky after graduating from Stanford. Exactly. And he's also never played in the SEC tournament in front of a 20,000 mm. seat packed house. Mm -hmm. Hero in traffic. Alabama with the takeaway. Ingram to Petty. Got to convert. Got to steal. Now you set up your offense. Got to get a bucket. Traffic jam on lower Broadway there, and Petty comes out of it. PJ's everywhere. He affects the game in so many ways, Sonny. That, that's his value. Hagan's cut off by Ingram. Doors open for Alabama. Can Tevin Mack get going? Reese not shy from the corner. If you're Avery Johnson, you're glad he got on the bus from yeah, the hotel. No he, has, no he has kept them in this game playing with a lot of confidence because he likes seeing the ball go in the basket. It's the same thing what Tevin Mack did last night. And have a guy come off and be productive. And Reese has done it tonight for Alabama. Now they need other guys to step up as well. You don't have to worry about him stepping up. Oh my. That kid is a player. And if you go under the screen, the ball screen, he's just going to kill you. That's if great you go action. over the top, at least you make him put it on the floor, another dribble. It's great action by Cal. A little pin down into a dribble handoff. Very difficult to guard, especially when you can score at all three levels like Tyler Hero. Hagans commits his third. Tyler Hero having an impact in his very first SEC hey, Hero, tournament. Hero's done it on both ends. We've seen him on the defensive. If you go underneath on a shooter like Hero, game over. You might as well just keep running to the other end. Cats on a roll. SEC Network Basketball is brought to you by Zaxby's. Chicken fingers, buffalo wings, salads. Find a location at zaxby's.com. All right, by the Cumberland River, beautiful Nashville, Tennessee, and Kentucky making their home in Nashville at the SEC tournament again. They lead 49-36. They won the first ever SEC tournament in Atlanta back in 1933 when Herbert H. Hoover was still in office, and they've also won the last four. So one seed LSU 
upset by Florida to get the day started. Andrew Nemhard with a game-winning three for the Gators in a wild finish. And Auburn held on to knock off Frank Martin's South Carolina team. So they'll meet at 1 o'clock tomorrow in the first semifinal. We'll decide the second a little bit later tonight as Tennessee matches up with Mississippi State. They just met a week ago or so, and Tennessee blew them out in the second half. Andy Kennedy, do you ever think about supplements for your follicles? That kid's got a good idea. You know what? I have thought about that, but not many people can pull off bald as well as I do, so I just <laughs> rock it. <laughs> Question off the court coming into this weekend is would there be more orange than blue in the arena? And there's still time for the folks in orange to file in. I'm taking blue. You? Yeah, it's an easy pick, but <laughs> but there's quite a bit of orange when you take a look around. Yeah, no question. And they are they're, excited about their they team. They are going to be well represented at this tournament, I assure you. When the Vols come out in the second game, uh, it, this place will erupt. Avery tried to set something up for Alex Reese, who has been their offensive star, but he is not as good catching coming off a pin down. He's more no. of a pick and pop yeah, stationary yeah. guy. Hero got a step past. Back to Reese. So you got Reese and Norris on the floor right now. Are they pretty similar players on the offensive end? I think they are similar, but now one will play the five. So now if uh, actually they've got Galen Smith in there, so they're just going big. This is their big lineup. When you look at that team for Alabama, that's bigger than some NBA teams when you look at their size at all five positions. So you take a look. You, you've got Petty who can shoot it, Reese who's already been shooting it, and Riley Norris, I said at the start of the game, he's got to make open looks. So right now what, what Avery's saying is we're going we're gonna to spread it. We're going to push. When you guys get open looks, shoulder square, face in the bucket, take the shot. And Dazon Ingram has to create those opportunities, yes, Sonny, getting to his left hand and then making good decisions off penetration. And each one of those guys who are in the lineup to shoot it, get set to shoot it. If Petty don't, don't even think about passing and kicking somewhere. Catch it and release it. They've got to put points on the board to get back in this game. Missed chance for Reese. Missed them both at the free throw line. Kentucky the other oh, way. Wow. Richards running the floor. Wow. The speed off the free throw. That is the way you draw it up. Ball gets advanced up that sideline. Great look by Keldon Johnson. Nick Richards running rim to rim. You run it in practice and you rarely think you'll get into the game. That's why you practice it though. Danger time for the tide. Hero tried to sneak it in to Johnson. Petty launches. Dante Hall has been silent tonight. He's got two points. Sonny, this is just how you draw it up. Good, clean rebound. Ball gets advanced. One dribble leads to a slam dunk. Cal will be happy with that when he watches the tape. And miscommunication by Alabama going back defensively. Two guys chase the ball. Nobody's at the bucket. Nobody, an easy bucket. Mistakes. Hall getting pushed around by Travis inside. Nice play. Travis came to help turn into a dunk. Hall's second field goal. A lot on the line for Alabama in this one. It would greatly improve their chances to make it to the NCAA tournament with a win against fourth ranked Kentucky, the number two seed in this tournament, currently sitting at 13%. And that will be affected by a loss, obviously. A win jumps them to 60%, a loss drops them to seven. P.J. Washington, great dime. He is sitting here, Sonny, with eight points, ten rebounds, four assists, three steals, mm. three blocks. Just another day at the office. Yeah, stat sheet stuffer, huh? Hall had to put it above the defender. 
keep it from being blocked, and they get Keldon Johnson for his third. Surprised he got the whistle because he faded away. You know, they, they don't give you, most officials won't give you that call. Yeah, I, I think the official must have thought there was a slap down at the end because I thought Kentucky did a pretty good job of building a wall here, not letting him get to his strong hand. Dante Hall has another free throw coming. Senior from Luverne, Alabama, in the twilight of his Alabama career. His father, Donald, was a huge Alabama fan. He hasn't seen him play a single game for the Tide. He passed away in the stands after suffering a heart attack while watching his son play eighth grade basketball. He signed his letter of intent on the very same table where they tried to revive Donald Hall back in the day. And with that free throw, Hall joins four other Crimson Tide players with 1,000 career points, 800 boards, and 200 blocks. The last two being Jamario Davidson and Jamichael Green. Big shot Bob Ori, another, and Leon Douglas. History for the senior from Luverne. And the question is, can he and his Crimson Tide teammates mount a comeback in the final 11:48 to keep their season and postseason hopes alive? He won the first tournament back in 1933, and now they've won four in a row. 2015, it was perfection for Kentucky. 2016, they survived Texas A&M in overtime. Derek Willis with the go-ahead three. Darren Fox was the MVP in 17 in this arena. He had 18 against Arkansas. And then Shea Gilgis Alexander with his postseason surge at 29 to give John Calipari his sixth title. Kentucky owns 31 tournament titles, more than all other SEC schools combined. That's why they call it the Kentucky Invitational. And so, no surprise that so many from Big Blue Nation show up in Nashville or wherever the tournament is, and they expect to win. They're like ants to a picnic, aren't they? Said it last night when you uh, are in Nashville and you're walking to the arena, from every corner and every alley, someone in the blue shirt's heading this way. Did you see him in the alley? I saw a few people <laughs> in the alley, and I think some of them did have blue on. <laughs> so yeah, you won this thing. I mean, the fact that Kentucky has... Excuse me, I didn't hear you. Could you repeat that? <laughs> you, you won What's this he tournament. What is he sitting here for? <laughs> it's an echo. How quickly it turns. <laughs> At Ole Miss, I, it just, it's astonishing that Kentucky, we know their great history, obviously, but to be able to dominate this tournament, because you know how hard it is to accomplish that. No doubt. And I think John Calipari, he, you know, he, this is serious. This isn't like, oh, let's play, and, you know, we're trying to improve our seed line. No, for all of these kids, you've got an opportunity to be an SEC champion. Yeah, this, that's a big deal. Well, think of the Kentucky kids because there's so many one and dones over the years. You want to leave with banners, right? You want to hang a banner, and this is a banner you can hang. No question. And if you leave Kentucky in one year and you didn't win the regular season, or you didn't win the tournament, or you didn't win the championship in the NCAA, you didn't hang a banner. Yeah, you're a footnote. That's right. Eight national championships in the winningest program in NCAA history. John Petty hangs. Wow. Hall able to hit for him. But the dribble penetration brought the help, which allowed Dante Hall to get to the offensive glass. This guy goes to tries to make a block on the ball. Dante Hall finally awakened. And it gives you a little life if you're a Bama fan. Now can you get another stop? String about four or five stops together, and then you got a chance. Travis on Hall. Cut off. It doesn't matter. Boy, he uses those shoulders in that wide body to clear space, even against a great shot blocker like Dante Hall. And Sonny, it all started with his initial touch. He had a very deep initial touch, which allowed him to get to his spot. Training back at the buckets now. John Petty has five. How about Petty becoming a penetrator? We know him as a jump shooter, but that is his growth of his game, too. Turns a corner, doesn't have the shot. Get all the way to the rim. And he's a big athletic wing. Yeah, he is. A lot of big athletic wings on this court. Hero. 
Amazing touch of Massé off the top corner of the square. He's got such explosive elevation to get up, and then he can finish any kind of shot because he's got great wrist, great release of every kind of attempt he takes. And I think he's a master of angles. I myself wasn't very good at geometry, but that kid <laughs> obviously was. Great angle to get him to the basket in two bounces. Paul slips, and the ball slips off. Ooh. Numbers for Kentucky. Hero hesitates, lobs, and P.J. jumped right past it. You know what they say, Tom? Ye who hesitates is lost. That's why I just jump right in. Much like here, initial touch for Reed Travis was good. You score in the post with space and angles, and he's very good but creating the angle. Another good angle off a downhill drive for John Petty. And what you can do, I can do better. Great drive, oh, incredible finish. Yeah, what a touch there. How often do you see a shot go off the top of the backboard and in? Well, and, and the difficulty is the fact that the speed you're going, now you've got to release it at a point that it's got a soft touch off the glass, not a firm touch. P.J. Washington all over Reese. Hagens with the steal. He had eight of them against North Carolina. School record. Now Hero pinned by oh. Hall. Out to Kelvin Johnson. That may be the first thing that I question that Tyler Hero has done all night. Why would he go with the left hand right there? Yeah, I don't know. He exposed the ball and they got it. And a terrific effort by Hall to get back and make a break. Keep playing. Keep playing. Not a surprising steal by Hagens. Third in this league in steals. He's got great hands. Bama turnover. You know, a lot of big men won't run back defensively to make a play. Goes to the left hand. It exposes the ball, as you said, Andy. But again, a big center running the floor. Terrific hustle play. No quit in Dante Hall. He has had a tremendous career at Alabama. Travis takes it himself. Ooh. Great ball fake. The, now you see me, now you don't. The, the, the wise old man of uh, the Kentucky squad. Grad transfer from Stanford out of De La Salle in Minneapolis. All eight of his points have come in the second half. And look where he got Hall off the block. And then Travis commits the foul on Dante Hall. Reed Travis said when he was a student at De La Salle in Minneapolis, he could not imagine taking full ability of all of his talents. And those that don't would be committing a sin. He plays as hard as he can every night. His team is up by 15. Final quarter final of the day is up next. Six seed Mississippi State, three seed Tennessee behind player of the year Grant Williams should be a fantastic matchup they just met on senior night in Knoxville a week and a half ago will be a lot more orange in this stands in just a little bit Kentucky leads by 15 they are playing kind of like Tennessee in the sense of playing as a true team tonight yeah a lot of touches on the offensive end and you talk on the think of offensive basketball it's body movement ball movement touches make a defense guard different angles and different bodies First guy next to Hero, ball moves, everybody's filling in spots for openings to catch. And they're playing the bucket, and they're delivering it off. So when you score a bucket, they've got 12 assists, sharing the basketball, keeping the floor spread, so guys can go to work inside or freeze up outside shooters for jump shots. I think their ball movement has been good. They have not shot it great from three, only three for 10. Uh, a couple of sloppy turnovers, but otherwise pretty flawless offensively. Well, what's amazing is Keldon Johnson is only one of six, has really hasn't joined the party tonight playing, and we know how great he is. Dante Hall at the free throw line. All defensive team in the Southeastern Conference this season. A fantastic shot blocker, more than 200 in his Bama career. And Bama has closed to within 13. 
It's getting about the part of the game, Tom, where Bama's going to have to string together a number of consecutive stops in order to fight their way back. Clock becomes an enemy under eight. Andy, I've always, I always thought as a player, can you change when you're down? Can you change the momentum of the game? And you really got to do it defensively. You got to somehow figure out to get Kentucky less comfortable on their offensive end. Travis finds the board, got tied up by Ingram. You know who's becoming more comfortable? Reed Travis. Yeah, yeah. This game was very important for him. Yeah. He's getting back into form by playing. He hadn't played in a while. Andy, I said this early in the year. Tom and I were doing a game, and we talked about, you know, Reed Travis showed up, and there were great expectations, and the early season was pretty tough. I kind of compared it when guys in baseball signed with the Yankees, right? It's a different environment. Right. You right. show up, man, my goodness, all eyes are upon you. And I'm sure Reed Travis said he didn't know who Blue, Big Blue Nation was. Yeah. He no, found out quickly. No questions. It's a completely different ball game at Kentucky. Uh, the kid has been a, a big contributor. Glad to see him back in Kentucky have a full roster. They get Hagen's on the illegal screen. Talking to Jack Calipari about Reed Travis yesterday, he said he's exceeded expectations. That he, through all of the work that he's done, has been more athletic. He's played more above the rim. He's got more elevation on his jump shot. All things that were important to both Reed Travis for his future and to Kentucky for getting him to be the type of player that can play in their system. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. And we saw the first matchup against Tennessee in Lexington, his value of what he did with Grant Williams. Yeah, no question. Another big body uh, to put both offensively and defensively. And look at his stat line. 17 minutes, eight points on four for six, five rebounds, three blocks. Very solid debut in his own right. Paul is slow to get to his feet after he went down hard with the ball in his hands. John Calipari with the call. See who they go to here. This is their base motion. This is the action that they're going to do uh, and then run into a specific set. Galen Smith commits his third. Andy, the concern I have for Alabama, that they're, Kentucky is running anything they want on the offensive end comfortably. Right, they're not forced uh, outside bad pass. I mean, they're just running what they want to run. Now, whether they make a shot or not, that's another story. But if Alabama gets in this game, they've got to change the comfort zone. They've got to be Somehow. they've got to be much more disruptive. You know, basketball is the ultimate game of rhythm. Establish e yours, disrupt theirs. Especially on the ball. Someone get in guys' face. Too easy right there. Well, yeah, it looks like they tried to go a little zone out of that inline OB. P.J. Washington wide open in the high post did exactly what you're supposed to do. Catch it, square, attack the basket. Kentucky's defense turns him over. Here's Hero. I think he was more concerned with drawing the contact than finishing the layup. Yeah, as much elevation as he has, just, just go make the play. And Travis with the foul on the floor for Kentucky. His third. Bam in the bonus. And you talked when they, they underneath out of bounce, they went quickly to a zone. I'm not sure all five guys were on the same page. <laughs> I agree, I agree. Right? I think it was a zone. Yeah, well, look, yeah, you, you couldn't uh, tell. Because I couldn't tell. A couple guys were man, three guys in a zone, and P.J. said, well, here, I'll get it four feet laid in. Yeah, let's, but you got to guard the first-team all-league player. Correction, that's the fourth personal on Reed Travis. Going to leave him. No, nope, they're going to get E.J. Montgomery in for him. If status quo holds, John Calipari after the game will likely rave about the job Reed Travis did first game back after missing five. Justifiably so. He is a complete difference maker because of all of the things that he can bring to their team. Does not jump off the page at you in any one particular area. Just a solid veteran leader, which is something the Cats are going to need moving forward. Comes from an athletic family. His brother played hoops at Harvard. His cousin Ross Travis played basketball at Penn State and then turned himself in to a football player. Now a tight end for the Indianapolis Colts after four years of hoops. They're going back to the monitor for something that happened. 
almost a minute ago. What are they looking at? Yeah, they, they were reviewing some action to see if there was a flagrant involved. And if, if, if us three didn't see it, I don't I don't think there was a flagrant. I just told him, let's play on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we, game. we, yeah, we game. didn't see it. Move on. Let's take a look. Top of the screen, Travis and Norris might be what they're looking for. Yeah. And did uh, did Norris take well, a cheap shot? Well, let's look. well I don't think it, I, I don't think it was a cheap shot. I think it was an inadvertent below the belt. That'll get you. That will get you, Tommy. That's speechless, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stand, yep. Standing eight count usually. You move on. Usually, That's right. Same That's right. result as you are dropping a wedgie comment on the air. <laughs> So I got nothing. Tell Riley Norris that was not exactly. Exactly. Go over there and explain it to the guy who can't breathe. Thanks for looking, guys, but that's not going to get those four minutes of pain back. Dante Hall at the free throw line. Not to play the role of captain obvious, but if Alabama is going to make a run, it is now or never. 520 on the clock. They have got to get stops. If you stand up and do that pose, you can be captain obvious whenever you want. <laughs> <laughs> so Reese returns. Give him another offensive option. Well, we know Kentucky handles pressure. If Alabama wants to put pressure on, they handle that well. Again, hard to disrupt. You've got a number one seeded team in the country that you're playing against. Well, here's what happens, too, Sonny, and you know this. You get extended defensively, which makes you susceptible off the glass, and Kentucky yeah. is so good off their offensive glass. But at some point, you almost have to take the chances, right? No question. Speaking of one seeds, Virginia trails Florida State by 11 in Charlotte tonight. That's a semifinal game in the ACC. Any chance you see a Virginia falling off the one line, guys? As of today, they're the number one overall seed. That yeah, will that'd change. Be hard to do. I think I losing think be... the number one national seed will definitely have an effect on geography if there's another ACC team, especially get into the D.C. regional. Yeah, correct. And I want to tell you this. We're watching a team right now that if they can win, finish this one tonight and win the next two, they could jump to the number one yeah, overall right. seat. After and that, the would, loss. that would lock up Kentucky in the Louisville Regional and likely in Columbus as well. And Big Blue Nation saying we've got enough gas to get to both of those spots. I know they'd certainly be happy at Rosebud's. But you know Cal, Cal has already set it Wait, up. Did Rosebud's expand <laughs> to Louisville? They should. They, they will now. We're looking at property. <laughs> so. Paul at the free throw line. And you know what Cal will say that he said they will ship us as far away as they can. That's what they do to us. Well, See, that's, that's, that's the Calism. Is that, that is, a word yeah, that it should is. be? Uh, that's a Calism. And he'll be in the toughest bracket. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Playing the hardest. We're going to play the hardest 16 <laughs> in the tournament. Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> it. That's it. Bama has closed within two touchdowns. All 14 for Dante Hall have come since the break. Kentucky will be patient in the half court. They've got multiple guys who can make plays at the end of the clock. Ashton Higgins will return for the Cats. Got to go a little quicker here, Sonny. Only 13 on the clock. Let's see if they can get something right to action. I was going to see if they zoned it defense. They didn't. Man to man. Good help. Hagen's passed up the three. Shot clock's at four. Kelvin Johnson. And I think Hagen's it. They, they got a bucket, but I think Hagen's. He's going to say to take that shot. I agree. Right? I think it surprised him a little bit. And he's been shooting it pretty well from three in league play. We got basket interference. What do you think? That's what they say. It is above oh, the yeah. cylinder. It's the right ball call has to be all the way out of the it's cylinder. In. Yes. Good call. Todd Austin with the right call. It's on the cylinder. It is not reviewable. And uh, a lot of Kentucky fans seeing and thinking back to that LSU game. You had to go there, didn't you? Well, I'm just putting you in their mind. I wouldn't mind for us to get to the international rules where you can take oh, it off the right, but that'd be great. Wow, that'd be fun. Great, great, great play. 
During this commercial timeout, we're going to make up more rules. Keldon Johnson just picked up his fourth. Big Blue Nation sharing their emotions. A lot to cheer about if you're a Kentucky fan, regardless of the last couple of whistles. Cats look like they will move on to a semi, so figuring out who they will face. Dory, Pat, Fish, and Fly here. We will see you after the game is over. And assuming score holds, as Tom Hart suggested, yes, John Calipari will come join us here. What is it you will want to hear from him, assuming they close this game? Well, you talk about his defense and how they've been able to hold Alabama to 50 points right now. That's a young team being able to step it up defensively. A young team that looks like a number one seed. <laughs> the one that's a set of basketball has been great to watch in Kentucky. All of that holds as long as Kentucky holds. Bama might have one more run in them, though, gentlemen. Let's see. Feels like a road game for Bama, Dari, because it sounds an awful lot like Ruck right now. And a lot to cheer about, especially the return for Kentucky of Reed Travis. Well, when he came in the lineup, well received by Big Blue Nation. And I think his teammates were happy he was back. And the coaching staff, big smiles on their face because he does so many things. Most great team and a great teammate to most have. Most especially the dirty work. Yes, he it's does. It's like heart. You and I don't want to do the dirty work. That's why we're glad he's here. That's right. They're glad to have him back because he's a guy that doesn't mind throwing that big body around, doing the things no one else wants to do. Tom At can relate. Tom can relate. <laughs> At times, no one wants to do that. <laughs> That's right. Should note, you're the first of the three of us to clock in today. Great job on the studio well show done. on ESPN2. Yeah, I'm a world traveler. Be here all night. I'm still on the rookie contract. <laughs> I work a lot cheaper than you two. Uh, John Ingram at the free throw line. He's the rook. Carry the bags. That's show right. up. That's right. Move here, move there. Hazing on air by Tom Hart. <laughs> you know, the best thing tonight, we got you away from the band. You know what? In your ear on the sideline report. No question. Mad props. And I saw it got John Calipari at halftime. Alyssa was trying to get a little. Yeah. He, he, he got a little bit of that treatment. Hard Nobody's safe. It's hard to hear over that trumpet. <laughs> if one had porpoise ears, it wouldn't be an issue. No question. Full court pressure. Handled easily. Again, great patience by Kentucky. Now let's pound it into Reed Travis. Inside out. Good action. If you're coaching against Kentucky, is that the one the shot you want from this five on the floor? Yeah, yeah and he doesn't look comfortable shooting. No, he, no he's question. passed up a couple of them, and that one wasn't taken with confidence. And that was the right shot, and he's yeah. been shooting it pretty well, especially lately. Yeah. Reese with the pump fake. Washington flew by. Unable to convert. But the handyman is back. Reed Travis. Another rebound, milk the clock, play through PJ, play through Tyler. He's not afraid to shoot it. And what people don't understand when, the, when you're milking the clock, it's tough on a defensive team. You got to stay in balance, you got to help, you got to stay down. And sooner or later, you kind of relax and you get it, give up a wide open look. Quickly knocks it in like that. To your point, Sonny, they are doubling off Ashton Hagens. But that time, Hagens made the extra pass to Quickly, who stepped in. An answer from Kyra Lewis, Jr., his first bucket, making it a 12-point game. Two minutes, 28 seconds left in regulation. Alabama trying to put together a comeback. Meanwhile, Kentucky quickly extending their advantage. It's 67-55, Cats. Mississippi State and Tennessee in the nightcap tonight. Our final quarterfinal of the day. The Vols, the eighth ranked team in the country, trying to cap what has been perhaps the best season in school of history with their longest win streak ever in two time player of the year, Grant Williams. So Kentucky looks to be in control with 228 to go. Remember, they split the series with Tennessee. Each team won the home game. Jordan Bone was 
just simply sensational in the second game in Knoxville. Five for five from three. And uh, no issues with Mississippi State. 44% from three. P.J. Washington, 22 points a game. So let's look ahead to game number two. Tennessee obviously the favorite. A.K., what does State need to do to pull off the upset? Well, Mississippi State has shot the ball exceptionally well in their last two outings. They've made 27 threes at over 50%. They need to extend that another day. They, they have the offensive firepower to certainly test Tennessee. Bam Bam firepower for Mississippi State. What do you think? Well, I think uh, the state's got to be physically tough, right? They've got to come out and try to punch Tennessee in the mouth a little bit. Tough to do. State doesn't play that way, but they've got to do it tonight. It's always awkward when you go on camera during a tournament setting and the folks on press row behind you weren't planning to be on camera right. yet, yet they show up. I'm not sure I was planning on being on camera. I'm sorry. I am still that. Where did that guy come from? Oh, yeah, there they are, including the uh, Wes Flanagan and the Auburn coaches. Yeah, see, yep. look, you're getting TV time. That's how it works. On. A lot going on over here. Sorry you having to sit behind me. Be careful when you come to a tournament and you fill the best open seat you can find because it might put you in the firing line. You never know. You never know. It's like sitting on the front row in a comedy act. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, don't do it. You don't can't do, do that. it. Let's go, let's go row four. Yeah, Gallagher's going to smash fruits all over you. Uh, did you like it? <laughs> did you like it in the postseason when you get to scout live again? Was that enjoyable for you as a coach? I think it's good because you get a much better feel live. Obviously, you're going to go back and watch the tape so you can rewind it and, and see where everybody is, is. But I think you get a great feel when you're in live. How much, though, when you're in conference and you get a conference tournament, how much do things really change? Nothing. You know, you're, you're just trying to see. Obviously, there's going to be adjustments made game to game, but you know these teams pretty well at this point. And really, your key is to get your dudes ready. And, no you, hope, and you hope you have a couple guys that have a magical run through any tournament. No question. And you make sure your GAs make a trip down Broadway to rally the fellas and get them back <laughs> in the rooms, get some rest, That's right. get a meal, much like we do with our staff. Here's quickly for three. Wow. Kentucky back back. rolling. And from the other side of the aisle, guys, Alabama will suffer its 15th loss of the season. Avery Johnson took him to the tournament last year. He's faced some very pointed questions over the last week, and even right here in Nashville from Paul Feinbaum, wondering if he's fully dedicated to the program. He has brought this Alabama program leaps and bounds past where it was when he took the job. Shot clock at four. Hero, not shy. Got it! A capper for the Cats. Kentucky 35 of their 73 coming from the bench before the Cats fans got back into it guys we're talking about Avery Johnson in his fourth season at the helm of Tuscaloosa great player in the NBA 16 years NBA coach of the year in 2006 the Spurs all time assist leader one of the best recruiting classes in school history came in last year with Colin Sexton and then Feinbaum really put the screws to him and Avery answered the question as anybody would. He said, listen, you question me, show up at the building at 5 a.m. He's got a staff that is dedicated to this and he's built an incredible program in Tuscaloosa. And remember last year, remember the shot, Colin Sexton hit an incredible runner to get them through the first round in a must win situation. Then what did they do? They bounced right back and blew out their in-state rival, the Auburn Tigers. They go to the NCAA tournament where they advanced. They beat Virginia Tech and were eliminated by the eventual national champion in Villanova. He had 18 wins his first year tying the great Wimp Sanders and our dear, dear friend for the most wins first season at Alabama. Season and postseason hopes will hang in the balance for Bama. Odds of making the NCAA tournament will drop to 7% according to Joe Lenardi. Senior Dante Hall can feel the emotions. Avery Johnson Jr. gets a shot off. Lawson Schaefer 
senior on the floor for Bama. And that'll do it. They won't shoot it again. Impressive effort by the Kentucky Wildcats in their first outing in this tournament. John Calipari will go to the set. Talk to Dari and the guys right here on the SEC Network as soon as we're finished. Standing ovation from Big Blue Nation while Big Orange waits for their time in the sun. Seventy-three fifty-five, the final. Kentucky knocks off Alabama. Bama will be very curious on Selection Sunday if they will return to the NCAA tournament. Would be their 21st in school history if they do. First semifinal is set. Florida and Auburn. Kentucky has their spot reserved for tomorrow at 3 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. They await the winner between Tennessee and Mississippi State. Volunteers waiting in the wings, ready to take the floor for the first time here in Nashville, the last team to do so. Kentucky Wildcats shoot 48%. Tyler Hero with 20 points in his first SEC tournament game. His honor to speak with Alyssa Lang. Tyler, 20 points in your first SEC tournament game. What went into that performance for you tonight? Uh, just my teammates put me in great, you know, great position to you know, do what I do. Um, you know, all goes to my teammates. I mean, you know, they put me in the right positions. They trust me, so I appreciate them. What did it mean to have that guy Reed Travis back on the floor with you? It meant a lot. You know, we missed him for a few weeks. Um, he, he means so much to the team. And, you know, when, he, when, he, when he's out there with us, we're a whole different team. Thanks, Tyler. Congrats. Tyler Hero with 20. He had a couple of threes. He was above and beyond the rest today. So was P.J. Washington. Reed Travis getting some postgame love as well. Our final 73-55 reminder, John Calipari will join the guys in the set in just a moment. For John Sunvold and Andy Kennedy, I'm Tom Hart. We'll be back with Tennessee, Mississippi State in just a little bit. Let's get you to the set. Here's Dari Noka. All right, gentlemen, thank you. We'll get it back your way for Tennessee, Mississippi State in a matter of moments. But right now, joining us, as you guys suggested, the head coach of the Wildcats, John Calipari, after an 18-point win over Alabama and another appearance in the semifinals here in this very tournament they've won the last four years. And coach, 55 points is all you allowed. We've seen this team develop defensively and become an absolute force. Win in your estimation, and what sparked it? What sparked the transition to playing this well on that end? Well, we we never work on defense in the summer when they get to the campus. The reason is the season's too long. So we're usually going to develop later defensively. We start the first day of practice, we'll talk defense. I don't have them in a stance in July. I'm sorry. We're working on fun stuff, shooting and telling them we're going to try to score 100 a game, and they're believing me, you know, like, man. But bottom line is, this team is a skilled basketball team. We were sloppy today. That you just got to get them to defend. Their offense is good enough. You know, I, I wanted P.J., he did fine. You know, he, he goes 12 points, 12 rebounds, and I'm not satisfied. I want him to be the best in the country when you watch and you say, wow, is he good. Yeah. How much better is he than last year? Today, like, he was good, but that's, for me, that's not good enough for him. Coach, I want to ask you a question. Y'all thought your defense was great, but did you focus in on, on Tevin Mack? And Kyra Lewis Jr. I just felt like you shut them down yeah, there. Well, Tevin Mack was 0 for 7. You know, Mack killed us last time. He yes. went 6 for 6. And, and the last two games, he made shots. Kelvin Johnson gave uh, John Petty that three in the corner. Backed away. Well, no, you, you we're making them floor the ball. And it was he and, and then Kyrie the same. But it was, um, you know, we're. What all even now, like we started four freshmen and a sophomore. Even now we're saying, can we get better as a team? How do we get better? How do we stay more engaged? I didn't think Ashton was engaged. I mean, he played okay, but he wasn't engaged. I mean, you saw him flying around deflecting balls. Well, where we need that guy. And at this time of the year, that's who you need. Coach Cal, you always talk about it's a process. And right now you're in the SEC tournament. A lot of things going well. What else do you think this team needs to improve upon right now? The biggest thing that I'm talking about and what I'm driving home, you cannot play up to the other team. You cannot play up to the tournament. 
play to the training. Mm. Now, we've been working every day, in, including individually, telling guys, here's how we want you to play. So play to the training, and then you can do that for 40 minutes. It's hard to play up to another team for 40 minutes. And if you're going to do anything postseason, you won't believe this. I've done this 30-some years. <laughs> you better play for 40 minutes or you're not winning. Yeah. And it takes that. And, and, and so that's what I'm driving home right now with this young group. 30-some years. You look great, Coach. You know who I'm going to focus in on, though. <laughs> I remember you when you were like 12 years old. <laughs> yeah, but that was day, that. Yeah, that's right. When Tony Barbie was making shots for you at hey, UMass. <laughs> you know I'm going to focus in on Tyler Hero just because I love seeing a guy that can step out, shoot the three, take it inside. He shot 8 of 14, okay, as a guy that relies on that jump shot. And he missed a layup. Right. And he <laughs> shot an air ball runner. And, and, and with all that, Coach, I'm not going to do the math, but I, I know that's over 50%, right? Right. Okay? I don't know exactly what it is. But I remember talking to one of your buddies from the media early on saying, Tyler Hero has not found his shot. What's he doing wrong? And the progression to see him from day one to now is amazing. You know what, what it is, doing? though? For you guys, they have to have defensive confidence mm -hmm. before they can have offensive confidence. If you're getting busted and dumped on and dribbled by, what, you're going to go down on offense and play well? You're going to be so confident after the guy got 25 on you. So it took him a while to be able to guard and make sure he was confident defensively, then he can let his offense go. But it doesn't work the other way. Let him shoot more. He should be. Mike said he's better than the other three. Let him shoot. It, it, is, it all comes back to certain things and the culture of what we try to create, which is you're unselfish. Yeah. If someone else has it going, let him go. We're all going to defend and be engaged. And then just play to win. I mean, at the end of the game, these kids, even though they're young, they're finishing off games. You're not giving the other team a chance. It was 12, it was 10. All right, it could have gone to six and four. But they did the stuff they had to do to keep that thing there, massage the clock a little bit, and still play. Now, that I know, philosophy, I know why he yeah, didn't recruit well, me. Well, I was going to say, I know why he didn't recruit you. Because you hold on to the ball too long, like that last question. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was you are defense free to go. offense. Congratulations. Best of luck, Thanks, tomorrow. guys. Thanks. Thanks.